The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 16th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary day and an extraordinary weekend. And of course, an extraordinary life. And the easy way to do that, well... It's to take a swig of water when you get a little dust bowl, <coughs> excuse me, that goes down your throat. But the other thing is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. Truly, I am. But more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, no problem. Send me an email. And it's up and working, folks. You can send it, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fantastic, fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, they're up 283 points. It's a little over 1%, 1.5% 1 for the S&P. That's 40 points to the upside. NASDAQ up 1 and 6 tenths percent. That's 120 points. The uh, big leader to the upside, it is the semiconductors up 2.5%. Russell's up 2%. Mean and green across the board. Russell 2000, by the way, is trading out at uh, 1491, up nearly 30 points out there. Spot volatility index is off 2 bucks. Just slightly underneath, minus 10%. Gold's off $8, silver down 7 pennies. Light sweet crude up 18 cents. Natural gas pulling back, leading the charge to the upside. Dollar wise, booking holdings 23 bucks. Amazon 23. Mercado Libre 12. BlackRock is up uh, about 12. Uh, AutoZone about 12 as well. AutoZone really in the zone. Uh, to the downside, it's uh, Alliance Data Systems off 7.5%, 11 bucks and change. And then you've got Intuitive Surgical down 350. Globant S A G L O B is off about 350. Of course, I want to hear from you. So, what do we want to look at first? I'll tell you what we want to look at first. And then, Ruby, we'll go take a look at corn maybe during the uh, after we come back from the first breakout here. But let's go take a look at these markets. What's going on right now? Now, the close is going to be muy importante. What do you mean, Steve Arena? Well, take a look at the ES Mini as an example. We'll take a look at a couple of the indices out here. Uh, but we know that, hey, the way that it made its last high, was with the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. And now, yesterday, when we were on the air, we were talking about how yesterday's push down lower intraday triggered a potential Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. And what we also said was, hey, uh, better better for the market to not finish really strong yesterday. That could then, for the bulls, that could then offer that bullish reversal signal. And voila, that's what we have inside the ES Mini. You've got that Three River Morning Star. Now, it's all going to be dependent upon the close. I don't know where the session closes. So it's possible, if it's a poor close, that we don't get that bullish reversal signal. But what if we do? What if we do? Well, the first thing is price will at least go test Stevie's red line. It's not that much higher. We're at 28.89. It's at 29.06. You could possibly get that today. But what happens if price closes above that level? That sets up a move to at least 29.77. That's the bottom of its current daily profile, maybe even 30.27, a run back for those highs. That's right, folks. Now, you might ask yourself, yeah, okay, Steve. Well, you know, I just turned in. I'm hearing you. Your roads will meant to me. 
just how how helpful is it? I, I mean, really, does it spot bottoms? Does it identify tops? Well, right now, you and I, we're just interested in the bottoms out there. So I answer your question this way. If we just simply go back in the ES Mini and we go back uh, nine years, will that work for you? And, and, you? and I have this is the plain vanilla version out here. You must know the rules that are associated with them. Uh, but I went back and I took a look. And now you've got the bullish reversal signal right here. The last time at a bottom, we had a bullish reversal signal. Nice counter trend rally was right here, uh, October 29, 2018. Now, that counter trend rally led to this little consolidation that went on. Let me just go ahead and grab a drawing tool out there that way you're looking at the same thing I am there's your little consolidation of course when that consolidation finally broke what did you get you got a measured move equal to that consolidation slightly below that that's what consolidations are and that's a possibility slight possibility we're dealing with the same thing right here and that means that the swing point from back on August 13th will be a key area for us so that's one possibility but at least uh, that's not saying hey you should stay short today and over the weekend if you get that message out there unless you're ready for the market to push its way up to the 2944 level and maybe beyond now if we go back even further out here and take a look at a prior bottom uh, November 11 2016 that was pretty important bottom if you take a look at the bottom that formed in February of 2016 that was an important bottom uh, if we come back here looking for those bottom signals here's one from June of 2012 pretty important bottom signal if you come back here into October of 2011. Pretty important bottom signal. You're kind of getting the gist, aren't you? How these things will work at the bottom. Sometimes it takes more than one signal at the bottom. Sometimes it only takes that one signal at the bottom. But back in July of 2010, that pattern is also what formed the bottom out there. So what that says, folks, here is I recognize we're in the unfavorable seasonal cycle. I recognize that many, including myself, were saying, hey, maybe this is just going to be more than a, maybe this is just a counter trend rally. Don't bet your sweet bippy on that just yet. Now, today's close is going to be really important out there. Now, let's go take a look at cash indices. Many of you are saying, well, gee, Steve, oh, that's great, but I don't have the access to the futures contract. Not that you don't have access. You're not willing to pay the fees to get access to that. Okay, well, let's look at the actual Dow. Let's look at the Dow cash indices. What do you see out here? You see a double bullish reversal candlestick today confirming that Rhodes momentum indicator after uh, well, not after. Uh, take it. So in uh, after. Conf uh, nope, 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 nope. Uh, so you see that confirmation out there. My apology. Both the gap to the upside as well as that Three River Morning Star. At a minimum, you should anticipate that the Dow is going to bounce to 26.130. That is at a minimum. Oh, by by the way, by the way, the last bottom inside the Dow. What pattern formed out there? Yes, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom. What was the candlestick? Well, that too was the morning star pattern out there. Folks, it's in the New York Stock Exchange. It's in the Wilshire 5000. It's in the ES Mini that we just took a look at. It's in the XLI, the industrials out there. Hmm, something to think about. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From from the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN. Com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. going on uh, but we are going to persevere through it so there was a request earlier uh ruby wanted to take a look at uh, corn out here and uh, so if we take a look at the uh, daily weekly set of profiles out here and uh, my guess is uh, ruby you're looking for a uh, bottom as a result of the a to b equal cd pattern that was out there so if we take a look at that folks we're taking a look at our a point uh being the high from june 17th the uh, b point is july 2nd the retracement, that's such a retracement. I mean, it's an 84% retracement. I'm, I'm really not a big fan of those A to B equal CD patterns, but it is what it is out there. Uh, if we go ahead and use that, you know, we can see that price has made more than the 1 to 1.618 A to B equal CD. What you have right now, Ruby, is you've got a new daily profile that formed today. And so if this is going to be a turn and a change in trend, then the level that I suspect you will be watching is uh, 385. Uh, 50 out there. So uh, your price right now has made it up to the center of the uh, box. Remember, both buyers and sellers are hanging out there. Uh, you haven't seen a close above the top of a daily profile uh, ever since it made its high out there. Uh, so I would say that the top of that box is really going to be your key level to watch. A close above that would suggest to you that a change in trend uh, is underway out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, John, I know you had written um, some information here about corn. I didn't have enough chance to read that as I was trying to get uh, my system up and going. But hopefully that's the information that you, you folks are looking for. If not, just ping me again, and uh, we'll, make sure that, uh, we'll make sure that we uh, get to that. By the way, John, you had also asked me a couple of days ago to take a look at the uh, TD combo and TD sequential signals on the shorter term time frame chart out there. And so uh, I was able to do just a, a tad bit of work before the uh, show started this morning. Uh, what I want to throw out to you here is and I know that the numbers are are small. They're blue and uh, red. And, and the real focus here, uh, folks, that, that we're looking for are the number 13s. 
And uh, uh, but the only way for me to be able to get this in here uh, so that you could see it was to keep that font size uh, small, just simply the way that the this software tool works. So and I'm not going to go through all of the uh, all the parameters involved with the TD sequential system. I'm definitely not going to do that. I couldn't do that. I could. I, it, would, it takes more than an hour to do that. So we're not going to do that. But if we do take John, if you, this is the two hour chart, the 120 minute time frame chart for the ES mini, which I believe is really controlling uh, the price that we have been dealing with here since August the 6th. Uh, it is now August the 16th. So for 10 days, 10 calendar days, and the reason why I say that is the solid green line and the solid red lines, as you know, those are the uh, resistance and the support lines established by that TD setup nine count. And we can see that resistance. You can see we've got four resistance lines that have formed use, using that nine count pattern, 2933, 2935, 2926, 2936, big, strong resistance level out here. So remember, we were looking at the daily time frame chart. We were looking at the, the rose momentum indicator bottom signal that it appears to be generating. We won't know till contract close today. But here's one thing that you and I do know for sure. Uh, one, I would anticipate that at a minimum that this is where price is going to bounce out to in this 29, 36, 35 range. If price closes above that, it's headed back to that all-time high in the 30,000, uh, 30,000. One day, the S&P will get to 30,000. Right now, just 3,000, 3,000, out there. Now, interestingly enough, if we take a look at the sequential system out here, the sequential system on the two-hour chart generated a nice uh, sequential count bottom signal uh, out here at the bottom on August the 5th. So what you and I know is that worked. Now, price ran right up into that resistance zone set up by the nine count. So that's a beautiful thing. What else do we know? Well, we know that a couple of uh, days ago at 2 o'clock on August 15th, I guess that was yesterday, what we got was a TD combo count. So sequential is blue. Combo is uh, a red out there. So the question is, hey, how often has it been working on the uh, two-hour time frame chart? Interestingly enough, up here at the highs, you got a TD sequential count. Again, this is a two-hour time frame chart for the ES mini. So that was certainly something to pay attention to. Back here uh, on the trading day of uh, July the 4th, that identified a high, a TD sequential count out there. Hmm, very interesting. Um, do they all work? No, because there is no tool where they all work, not at least that we've been able to find or that I've been able to find out here. Here you've got a nice sequential count uh, that uh, back on June the 2nd. So uh, June the 2nd, by the way, of 2018, uh, 2019, I should, uh, because we're on a two-hour time frame chart. Uh, if I put this to the shorter-term time frames here for you, John, you'll just kind of see the, now, let me do this here, because I don't want to switch to a 10-minute chart and do, okay, it's got 200 days. We don't want to do that. Let's do, let's do uh, 30 days out there. So I'm just going to change this to 30 days and then change it to a, uh, I'm going to change it to a 10 minute time frame, just as, just as a example out here. So here are the 10 minute time frames. Um, I'm not seeing them necessarily as anything significant. You can see, you can sort of see the numbers out here on my screen, but the reality is I would answer to your question just based on the work that I've done. It hasn't been hours and hours and hours worth of work. It's just been a, a bit of work out here. I didn't see on like a shorter term time frame where the signal was 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 really uh, helpful to us was uh, but but what's cool I think and here's a 30 minute time frame chart and a 30 minute time frame chart I didn't see uh, anything that was a whole lot more significant you know, than, than the 10 minute charts per se. So, but when we get up to, but the two hour chart is working really well. So the nice thing for you is uh, just based on what we just looked at, and I know that you track these on your daily charts, and also you're also trading the ES and the NQ um, fairly often, is uh, don't use it for the shorter term time frames. First, it's, it's, it's a burden unless you have an automated tool to really uh, track it. But the two-hour time frame chart, no problem. Now, uh, I'll put this to the five-hour time frame chart for you. Uh, that data series may need to be more than 20 days out here. So let me just put 75 days. And let me go ahead and put in – I could have done it all one time. wasn't really paying attention. I was paying attention. I just wasn't paying attention, if you know what I mean. So let's put this on the five-hour time frame chart, just kind of uh, solidify that see what is out here and uh, but at least you know go ahead and use it for the uh, yeah I don't see it so far initially here on the five hour chart 
I, I, what I can say for you is when we look at that two hour time frame, it's working on a number of different um, for a number of different uh, for the TD setup nine count, it's resistance and support. So use it for use it for the uh, on the two hour time frame chart as well. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, we had a question that came in about Nvidia. Let me see what that question was. This is from uh, from Eddie. He says, "Do you think Nvidia will close at its highs today because it's hanging around the 158 area after its earnings report last night?" Um, Let's take a look at NVIDIA here. So if NVIDIA, here's what we know about it right now. And, and I will come back to it after the break as well. But here's what we know. Price is right now gapped above the top of its daily profile. So we're going to call that bullish. It's tested intraday the bottom of or the, the top of that profile, which is 157.01. As long as it stays above there, the daily chart is saying it's got further to go. It doesn't say it's going to close at the high of the day. But I'm not going to make that call. Price is trading with inside the box on the weekly and the monthly out here, where resistance is 168.73. So, Eddie, what you want me to do on my other charts is go see if we can find a bottom that might have occurred out there to assist. And we'll do that when we come right back from this breakout here. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at uh, NVIDIA uh, for Eddie, and uh, Eddie's got a number of questions out here. Let me just kind of give you my, and Eddie, you're asking about also, you know, should you should you get rid of this trade before the weekend and Hong Kong protests and stuff like that? I, I have no idea how much uh, the so-called Hong Kong protests really affect the U.S. market. I realize the people in the media, you know, use that as an excuse. These folks in the media, they, look, they couldn't look at a stock chart not all of them there they do have some technicians that are on there of course i, I i'm not gonna i won't go there but but you know i guess the, the point is that they look at news events to try to somehow explain the chart we don't do that at the show we never do that at the show we never will do that at the show and the reason that we don't is because you and i look at historical patterns out there uh we can't hover over a bar and understand what news event may or may not have affected the markets it really doesn't matter. See, the market knows more than the media, and the market knows in advance what its intentions are. And what you and I do is we just read those signals. And if we do that, you know, then it's a beautiful thing out here. And by reading those signals, it's really important for us to understand where support and resistance is at. Look, in the old days, when I was just a beginner at this, what I would have said to you and taken a look at the chart, I would have said, hey, you've got this gap to the downside from August the 5th that had a volume of about 15 million shares. If price doesn't close over 159.28 today, of course, this was before I had profiles and all these other tools out there. Um, that uh, you're dead in the water. Yeah, you better go ahead and, and sell out there. Uh, I wouldn't tell you that. Now, is that a resistance area? Yeah. Do you want to see a close over 159.28? Yeah, of course, out there. That would just simply repair that window, that gap to the downside. But the volume of that gap, as we took a look at, was 15 million shares. Today, you've already done 17 million shares. So that's a beautiful thing. What else do we know about NVIDIA from a daily standpoint, taking a look at its chart? Well, first, I don't have any kind of bottoming signal per se out here. Um, uh, but what we also know is that as long as price stays above that top of that box, 157.1, it will also be above Stevie's green slash red line out here. That says there would be more counter trend rally involved in NVIDIA. I don't have anything on a weekly or a monthly time frame, so no reason for you and I to go over there. We know enough about the weekly and the monthly, and that is trading with inside its box out there. It's a bullish structured weekly box, as 1 in 68.73 ought to be tagged out there. But, um, you know, so it doesn't have the type of bottoming signal that the ES Mini had as an example out there. That doesn't mean that it hasn't formed the bottom and won't move higher. Everything we're taking a look at here suggests that it would. If it closes under 157.01, you know, then it's telling you it couldn't take out uh, a level of, res two levels of resistance, and then you've got to make the decision at that stage what you want to do with that trade. So I hope that that helps you out. Um, and, uh, and, and I would just say don't, well, I'm not going to allow whatever might be going on in the news media and what, what people might be saying out there to uh, somehow impact what the message of the uh, markets is. Just, just, I, I just, I can't do that. Okay, so that takes care of, I believe, all of the questions. I don't think there was anything else in the Tiger's Den, but if there was, if you put a question in there in the Tiger's Den, if you'd be kind enough to ping me, uh, that would be uh, great. Um, Okay, Mike, that was just a no question, just a follow up. All right, so so where where else? So, so what what should we take a look at? What should we take a look at next? Oh, I know we should take a look at next. So so here just to to you know make sure there's no hocus pocus domino cus out here, uh, because the next thing we're going to go look at is the advanced client oscillator reading for the New York Stock Exchange. I don't know where it's at, but here I'm going to pull over the New York Stock Exchange chart out here, and you can see how this formed this uh, so far today uh, has formed the uh, rose momentum indicator bottom. It's done that with the bullish reversal signal, the three river morning star. New York Stock Exchange ought to move up to 12, 665, 47, maybe even more than that, because it's a significant bottoming signal out here. Did, uh, did you, a significant bottoming signal. Now, to go along with the New York Stock Exchange, we take a look at its advanced decline oscillator. Oh, well, that's interesting. If you take a look at the, uh, this had a declining tops advanced decline oscillator, and right now it's above that area. So that's a suggestion of a 
change in trend. Now, the confirmation for the New York Stock Exchange, its change in, its change in trend, would be uh, two closings above the zero line on that advanced decline oscillator. It's still at minus 2731. Still says I have to give the benefit of the doubt to the sellers out here. But what the sellers don't know is you and I are taking a look at the bottoming pattern. And we know how valuable and important that bottoming pattern is for the New York Stock Exchange, S&P, and so forth. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to get sucked into that vortex either out here. So the New York Stock Exchange is saying this is more. This is more, potentially more, than a counter-trend rally. Let's just say this. Those that are just thinking it's only a counter-trend rally, I'm not in that camp anymore. Uh, not especially if the market closes where it does and we get the signals that we have out there. So um, with regard to the spot volatility, it's got a long way to go before it gets into bullish mode. Bullish mode, which just simply means there's plenty of liquidity in the market, means that it has to close below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's at 1636. Now, I would say if the spot volatility index closes below 1833 today, um, that would be a signal that that's what its intention is, at a, at a minimum, to go run down to the 50-day exponential moving average. That's at 16, I said that, 1636. So I just repeated myself. If price closes over 1833, it's always kind of uh, people on edge, traders on edge. Uh, uh, out there. Uh, question, question out here, SR, S, uh, question on the S&P 500. Fact, S&P declined six days off a 3028 top. Good down move, yeah. Number two, now in the ninth day of bouncing correction up, could this action give way to renewed selling and lower lows early as next week as you see it? So I, with regard to the S&P um, 500, so the S&P, as we take a look at it, uh, John, you're going to see that it doesn't show a, a Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom. Why is that? Well, because uh, after the contract had uh, reopened for trading um, yesterday, uh, the futures went down to make a lower low, but the S&P cash did not. So thank goodness what you and I do is we use both the futures contract as well as the cash indice out there to assist us with the message of the uh, markets out here. So I just simply will go back, John, and say, look, uh, it's always a possibility, but I'm just going to suggest do not ignore this bottoming pattern out here. Well, ignore it if you want. I am not going to ignore it. I know better. I'm not going to ignore it. At a minimum, at a minimum, John, what we should expect is at least a test of Stevie's oscillator and change line, the red line. That's at that 2906 level out there. Um, and I think the other thing that you and I know is there is an apogee pivot point that should form over the weekend. So you and I, Sunday night at 6 o'clock, um, and certainly within the first few hours of trading, we're probably going to have a relatively good idea um, as to what the uh, real intent of the ES Mini is. So, um, yeah, you, you know, I just, I just, uh, I, I'd be careful on the short side. I'd really be careful holding the short side um, if, uh, if, if the market closes around where it is, higher, something like that, with these bullish reversal signals out here. Um, that's just the way it is. That is just simple chart reading and ignoring seasonal stuff and all that other stuff out there. Just simple chart. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you'd like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. We'll try to get back inside the uh, den as soon as uh, possible out here. And uh, But right now, we've got the uh, Dow up about 300 points. S&P is up 42. NASDAQ's up 129. Uh, Russell, everything is uh, to the upside. You do have the spot volatility index, which right, right now is down below a minus 10% out there. We have been going back and forth with regard to the uh, spot volatility index. Uh, if it closes at a minus, uh, below minus 10%, uh, what we're going to be able to do out here, I know you can't see my uh, charts, but uh, we'll get these here posted as soon soon as we can, just waiting uh, for my connection to establish itself with uh, HQ out there. But in essence, let me just explain to you, uh, when we take a look at the spot volatility index, one of the things, there's several things you and I look at, but one of the things that we pay attention to are those one-day rates of change, both above plus 10% and below minus 10%. Let's talk about the ones minus 10%. The ones that are minus 10%, uh, those are referred to as, or I like to refer to them as initiation moves. Now, initiation moves need follow through on the uh, next uh, day but they typically will lead to higher price so when we put that together combined with the bullish reversal signals we're seeing on daily charts for the es mini for the dow jones cash and new york stock exchange the wilshire 5000 the uh uh, the industrial sector inside the s p 500 uh, even we're getting one inside the energy sector the xle although that one has not been confirmed out there. Okay, this is gonna give me a chance. Uh, oh man, it is not giving me a chance to even get inside our Tiger's Den. I'm sorry about that, folks. Just kind of trying to um, trying to multitask out here. So, so the guys in the den, just to let them know, I'm experiencing the same problem inside the den as I did a few days ago on Monday, I think it was, when I couldn't get in whatsoever to do the show or anything like that. Okay, just so I got folks that can try to work on the problem in the uh, background. So so you can't see my charts. So I'm going to do the best job that I can to really explain. You can do this yourself. Uh, you can go back and you can take a look at one-day rates of change in the spot volatility index, and you can just simply identify... 
the days where you've seen those where they were my, below minus 10% out there. Um, look, we had the, the last minus 10% that we had was just a few days ago on August the 13th. There was no follow through the next day. That was two days ago. But what there was two days ago, there was that spot volatility index rate of change above plus 10%. And of course, that leads to typically a bounce or a bottom. Right now, for the S&P 500, we're calling that a bottom. A bottom that at least takes price up to where it has been consolidating the 2940 level. And if above that, it's going to make a run for its all time highs uh, once again out there. And we may just be in that just may be the consolidation we're in. We might just be in this junior consolidation out here. I don't know. We always take things one step at a time out here. OK, so what else should we look at? Um, oh, I know one thing I should do. I should try to restart this Tiger's Den again. But uh, uh, but that's going to take a while, even if it does come up. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. Let's see, what can Stevie tell you about gold at this stage? So what I want to tell you about gold, even though you can't see the charts out here, what I'm going to, it's down about $6, trade out at $15.25. Now, the key level for gold to be watching today is $15.20. We'll just call it $15.20. Forget about the change out there. The reason why I say that's a key level out here is because that is Stevie's green line. And as long as price stays above that, by the way, it's been tested a couple times during the day today. So support is being tested. And as long as price stays above that, then uh, it says that it may want to continue higher. Now, there, we've got a topping pattern that is confirmed. And that was with a, uh, a bearish reversal candle yesterday. It was with a key reversal sandal, candle uh, four days ago. And... Uh, um, so we've, we've got these topping signals out here, but what we don't have is really a bust through of the first level of support. And that first level of support is going to be 1520. Now, if it does close below 1520 today, that would be saying to you and I that we should anticipate a lower price. Now, lower price to where? Well, lower price to the TAS profiles. That would be the next level that you and I would look at. So where are those TAS profiles? Well, I'm going to explain where they're at as soon as they pop up on my screen out here. Uh, they are way down at 1437. 1437 out there. Yep, that would be the top of its box. Let me just try my other advanced warning Doppler tool. Just see if by any chance there is a new profile that's forming. And there is a not. So really, any pullback should find support, I would say, between 1437, the top of its daily, and 1453, the top of its uh, weekly profile out there. Um, also, with regard to gold, there was a breakout. Its last breakout on a daily basis was 1412. Here's what I really want you to know about gold. If gold doesn't close below $1,520 out there, um, there's no signal. There's no signal being provided to you and I that what it wants to do is uh, pull back and retrace. Um, yeah, still no luck with the uh, Tiger's Den out there. Just letting the guys in the uh, control room know. Still the exact same problem that uh, I experienced uh, last uh, Monday out there. Okay, so that was Goldilocks. Uh, what do we want to go look at uh, next out here? Oh, I know what I want to look at next. I want to see if there's any requests coming in on the hotline. That would be the email, steve at tfnn.com. And uh, as I take a look here, I, uh, I don't see anything. So oh, I take that back. There we go. Uh, so something just came up. Jeff L. And Jeff wants to take a look at uh, Google. So, uh, Jeff, uh, hopefully you are listening in. And uh, I'll be able to uh, – you won't be able to see it on Tiger TV. My apology for that. But let's go take a look at Google and uh, figure out what it is uh, doing. Currently trading out at 1178.40. So here's the things that you know about Google with regard to its daily, weekly – and monthly time frame. Price is trading below the daily bottom of its box, which is 1207.70 out there. So that's not bullish uh, unless we can see some type of bottom signal. We haven't gotten there yet. On the weekly basis, price is trading in between its uh, bear structured weekly profile and the top or resistance is 1209.99, 1210. Um, so that's a resistance level out there. So now you got 1207, bottom of the box would be resistance, 1210 weekly resistance out here, but price is trading above its monthly profile, which is 1101. Okay, so we have that. You know our support and you know our resistance is. Well, I didn't really give you support, did I? So support inside of Google to the downside would be where it last broke out. And where it last broke out was 1093.70. There was a little gap to the upside that was back in uh, June out there. Um, so at this stage here, I would say that uh, unless Google 
close above 1189. 1189 is Stevie's green line out there. Um, it, it's it's just trading sideways. I don't have I don't have a I don't have and I don't know what your position is, how long you've been in or you're looking to get in. Uh, it's really trading in be it's it's trading below resistance from a daily standpoint, and it does open up that door potentially for 10. 93 out there. Hey, I just did get uh, back into the den. So what I'm going to do out here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, there we go. I'm going to show you the uh, profiles so that you've got access to those. Now you can see the daily, weekly, and the monthly. And then I will put Stevie's other chart up here on the screen, the other daily chart. Here you're going to see Stevie's green line at 1189, and you're going to see the breakout at 1093.70. So Jeff, I, I hope that helps you out. You're asking my opinion. My opinion is really just kind of uh, neutral to anticipate uh, some uh, potentially lower price out here. Um, yeah, that's my that's that's my take on Google as I take a look at it right now. Dow's up 285, S&P 41. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, sorry for a couple of technical uh, difficulties here as we go into the uh, last uh, two-minute uh, run out here. Hey, with regard to Monday, I'm going to attempt to do Monday's show uh, in the morning from 8 to 9 a.m. I will not be able to do the 1 o'clock show for sure. We'll see if I can do an 8 to 9 o'clock show. Join me live for that. Uh, I'll try to make arrangements to do that uh, here. Um, with regard to today, with regard to specifically, let's say, just the next couple of hours out here, um, when we began the show, we were looking at the uh, two-hour time frame charts, one of the first couple of segments out here. Although you can't see it, um, this two-hour time frame is going to end at 2 p.m. And uh, both on the ES Mini two-hour time frame chart, the NQ and the Russell 2000, uh, both of those are in the bar following bar nine counts out here. And uh, that says, in the NQ, it actually the high of the day so far has been the bar that ended at uh, at noon. Uh, if the high of the day gets taken out in the NQ, the ES, and the Russell 2000, uh, that's going to give you a pretty good indication that the market should close at its highs and that you should see an even further rally. If there was a point in time when the market would start to move sideways, hiccup, or even begin to pull back because a two-hour chart has been working so very well at helping us to identify turns in the market, then this would be it. I am not suggesting you go short the market. Okay, I just want to be clear. What I'm giving you is a data point that's really going to be helpful to you to understand what the markets are likely to do between the 2 and 4 o'clock time frame. So any tick higher, just by one little tick, above the high in the ES Mini, in the NQ, and in the Russell 2000, tells you this is a very strong move that is underway. Whether it's counter trend or not, well, the daily charts are suggesting otherwise. But we'll have more information for you, I'm sure, early Monday morning at 8 a.m. So please join me live then. I want you to have a great weekend, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you soon. And thanks for sticking with me during some of these technical issues. So have a great weekend, folks.